Uh, amen. Sister Martina is going to come and read for us. Amen. It's in John chapter 2, 1 to 11. And after which I will return with today's word very briefly. And uh, God bless you. Please remember after the service, we please take your, your roles. And uh, we want to take a photo of you, uh, mothers, so that we can... We can celebrate you. That that photo will be presented to you on next week or when next time we see you. All right. Well, we want to really give you uh, the best that we can today. God bless you. Amen. Sister Joaquin. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. 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 Good scripture will be taken from St. John chapter 2 from verse 1 to verse 11. That's St. John chapter 2 from verse 1 to verse 11. If you find it, please say amen. Amen. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there and though Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they fill them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which threw the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and said unto him, Every man at the beginning that set for good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worst, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. Last verse. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and manifested for his glory, and his disciples believed on him. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank God for bringing us, amen, thus far in our service. Praise the Lord. Amen. Today I want to share with you, amen, a word from the Lord. Amen. And today's homily is titled, The Best Advice a Mother Can Give. Amen. The Best Advice a Mother Can Give. Certainly we, I intend to be around for a little while. I I have no plans to, to leave this earth anytime soon, amen, unless the Lord so will. And so I will not try to cram every possible thought I could give about mothers into one sermon. But suffice to say that, that I'm happy uh, that God has created what we call mothers, amen. I thank God for my own mom, I'm going to call her when I get home today. Uh, but I, I am so very happy that God has given us good mothers. Amen? Uh, you must understand, please, that, that there are some people that are not so fortunate. There are some, some mothers that, that have not done what, what, what they're supposed to do uh, in terms of looking after the blessing that God has given them. And don't you not know that there are some people who have been trying, amen, to become parents but are not so successful yeah. uh, they've done all they can all the amen operations all the therapy everything they could possibly try and it's just not their lot uh, there are some people in the scriptures like that uh, the one that came to mind right now is her name is Hannah mm -hmm. and uh, Hannah as you know uh, was married to a man that loved her dearly he did everything he could do to make her comfortable but she was not fulfilled until she had a child. Yeah. Amen. And so many people are the same today. I believe even Rachel uh, at one point uh, challenged her husband, Jacob. She said, in other words, she said, uh, give me seed or else I die. 
and Jacob had to tell her, he said, am I in the stead of God? Am I God? I can't, I, I'm not the one that, that can decide whether we have children or not. Amen, somebody. And so there are a lot of people out there who are trying their best to be parents naturally, and it's not working out. And some have resorted to adopting, and some have become foster parents, and, and or just taking on, the, on the, their wings other people's children. But, I, but if you've been so blessed to, to have a child of your own, it is a blessing from God. Amen. Amen. I want to go as far as to say to you, uh, don't be afraid that perhaps they're not even your children. Amen. God has just given you the privilege. It's a privilege to be a custodian over his children. Amen. Amen. I want to let you know it's not Children's Day, it's Mother's Day, but I want you to understand that there is a, a, a protective shield over every child. Amen. And God is not going willing to, to forgive people who hurt children. Praise God. Amen. He's, he's, he said if any man hurt one of these little children, it would be better for him if a millstone were tied around his neck and he was thrown off into the deepest end of the sea. God looks after children. Amen. In fact, when Peter, one of his disciples, thought that he was too tired to, to attend to the children, he said, Peter, suffer the little children and, and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Somebody praise the Lord this afternoon. Amen. And so I want to thank God for parents, those of you who recognize that, that what you've been blessed with is, 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 is a privilege that God has given you to, to help to mold the life. Amen. Man, you've got a lawyer growing up in your house. Perhaps you're not even aware yet that there is a doctor, amen, that, that you're providing for, that you're providing for the next prime minister, the next the next pastor, the next opposition leader, amen. Somebody, sometimes, I think I heard Whitney Houston some time ago, amen, in one of her albums, she, she, she said, mommies and daddy, and uh, I forgot the lyrics, uh, amen, always wish their child would grow up to be something special. But who would imagine a king? Amen. Mary certainly didn't, didn't understand that what she was, was carrying was the Son of God. Come on, somebody. And I want you to begin to treat your child as if, as if an angel told you that he was going to be something great. Amen. Treat your child as if, as if God sent a word from heaven. Amen. In the middle of the night to tell you that that child that you were looking after is going to be the Son of God. Amen. Look after them like that because you never know what God has blessed you with. Somebody pray. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And so I started out talking about people who were not able. We talked about Hannah. Uh, we, we talked about, well, let's talk about Sarah. Sarah, as you know, was barren and she was, was getting up in age now. She was getting old at this particular uh, time in her life. It would not be naturally possible for her to have any children. Amen. But the Lord worked a miracle. How many know that we serve a miracle working God? Amen. God touched Abraham. God touched Sarah. And in her old age, she was able, amen, to bring forth children. I'm here to tell somebody today, I'm not trying to tell you to go hurt yourself, but I'm here to tell you, don't write God off for anything that you're believing in God for. Amen. amen. He may not come when you want him to, but he will be there right on time. Somebody praise the Lord to me. Amen. He's an on-time God. You know what? I believe he, he will delay some stuff because he has a time set for certain things yeah, to happen. Sometimes when you look at the calendar and realize that your age is fast passing and you look through the window and see amen, your friends being blessed in a certain way. I know humanly speaking it can bother you. It has it has affected me in many ways as well. Similarly, but today's Mother's Day I'll talk about my, my own little testimony some other time. But sometimes when you when you see other people getting by and, and, and men, you realize that both of you, you all started at the same same spot. You were all in high school together. You all grew up in the same house or the same community and you can look now and see that everybody got the same start but somehow or the other they progress ahead of you. It can be a bothersome task. It, it can offend you. It can bother you. Some people don't know how amen, to treat that kind of stuff. They become bitter and resentful and, and jealous and covetous. Amen. But I want to encourage somebody today that, that your time is coming up next. 
don't know if they have it here, but, but, but back in the day when we used to have a, what we call clinic, I know they have walking clinic, I've never been to one, so I, I really can't tell, but back in the day when they have clinics, and, and you, sometimes you go there as early as you can, but there's a long line, amen, you don't get discouraged, you join the line, because sooner or later you'll be in the middle, and the back will be way behind you, and you know if you stay with it, amen, not long afterwards you will hear them say that four letter word, next, I'm here to tell somebody your time is coming up next. Hallelujah. Don't get upset. Don't get jealous. Every time God blesses somebody, rejoice with them. Amen. Be happy over them. Amen. Celebrate with them and get them on the line. Say, go on, honey. Get your car. Get out. Eh? Get your husband. Move out. Eh? Get your house. Move on. Because as soon as they move up the line, you're getting closer to your time. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Amen. So Sarah got looking at their her biological clock to say, you know, Abe, you know, I'm not able to do Amen what I was Amen hoping I would do. You know, I'm getting older. Amen. Look at look at my skin. It's not as smooth as it used to be. And they have invented oil of Ole yet. Amen. I'm not going to work out trying to keep it straight. It's beginning to wrinkle. Amen. Time is passing it by. What if God did not plan for us to have any children? Look, maybe Maybe you want to look at my helper. You know, she's young and, and whatever child comes out of her, technically, it will be mine because she's my slave girl. And you know, Abraham took that advice and, and went into Hagar. And you know what happened next? Amen. Hagar became fruitful. And, and as a result of her fruitfulness, she despised her, her, her master's wife. Call somebody. You know, sometimes people, God will delay us sometime. I don't know why I'm on this point, but I'm going to get off that point soon. So Sometimes God delays our blessing until we are able to manage what we are asking for. Yeah. You know, it's not that he didn't hear us the first time, but if he gave you that car when you ask him, maybe you wouldn't be in churches. Maybe you wouldn't be alive today if you had given it that husband when you were asking for. Amen. Sometimes, let me, get, let me go there since it's on my mind. Amen. Let me go there. Sometimes, amen, you become despondent because you, 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 are, you, you saw somebody who was a potential soulmate and they, they moved up to somebody else. But honey, if you ever knew, amen, look at your neighbor. This is the first time I'm telling you to do this. So look at somebody and say, honey, if you ever knew, uh -huh, you don't know what's going on behind closed door. Amen. You see them smiling, holding hands in public. Amen. If you knew what's going on behind closed door, you would thank God that he let somebody else have it. I wish I could appreciate this one. Hallelujah. You want to thank God every day. Amen. For what he's doing in your life. God does not operate out of complaint. Every time you complain, it closes God's hand. Every, every time you complain, it, it, amen, it pushes God away from you. But when you praise God, come on somebody. Amen. Even when it doesn't make sense. When you thank God for what you've got. Come on. I feel I'm praising the house today. When you give God glory for what you've got. Amen. Somebody how or the other. God is audacious. He will not allow amen himself to owe you anything. So if you're praising for something that he's not done as yet, he will try to balance the books and provide it for you. Good measure. Press down and shake it together. That at least now you owe him a praise. Somebody shall go in the house today. Is there anybody in this room that have been praying for something that have not received it as yet? I challenge you to praise the Lord in advance. You know, it's great, it's good. You can praise Him now, and He will do it for you later. Hallelujah. I know you got your friends here, but if you lift your hands and say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for the place of worship. I don't see it yet. I don't have the keys in my hand, but I thank you. I thank you for my job. I thank you for my home. I thank you for my status. I thank you for my wife. I thank you for my husband. I thank you for my child. Come on, somebody. I thank you for my place of business. Somebody praise the Lord. Amen. Hannah, Sarah tried, tried to work things out. Thank God by herself. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, let me pause for a moment and just thank him again. I just feel, you know, every time you say thank God, you know what happens? He inhabits Holy Ghost. He inhabits the praises amen, of his people. Amen. Paul and Silas were thrown in jail. And at midnight, they stopped.
fountains of prayer and sing praises unto God. And there was a great earthquake. You know what? God wasn't trying to let them out. No. The earthquake occurred because God was trying to get in the midst of the praise. Can I get a witness in the house today? Lord have mercy here. Anybody with that extra hallelujah? I know you said praise the Lord already. Hallelujah. And so, and so we got Sarah. Sarah, Sarah made a mistake and, and tried to get ahead of God. And hallelujah. You know what happened? Amen. She tried to get ahead of God. And now we are in a mess. Amen. Her, amen. Her Hagar son was Amen Ishmael. And from him, Amen became Amen the, 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 the Palestinians. And now, Amen, out of Sarah's womb came Isaac, from which came the Israelis. And now we got the Israelis and, and the Palestinians at war. Amen. Because somebody didn't wait to the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I feel some pushing me here this morning. I'm here to tell somebody, wait on the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. When you pick, you are picking somebody out of your knowledge, out of your understanding, out of how you see it. And we are all in a fallen state. Amen. When you choose, you're choosing based on your circle of influence. And you may choose the wrong man, choose the wrong girl. Amen. But when God shows for you, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Will you help me tell somebody, wait on the Lord. Uh, uh, when God shoes for you, amen, you will choose the best there is. Uh, can I get a witness here now? Amen. Sarah, Sarah chose and amen. She made an error and now we are we are all suffering because of Sarah's, amen, Sarah's error. Amen. We spoke about Hannah already. Let me mention one more before we move on to Mary and then get out of here. Amen. What about Elizabeth? You know, Elizabeth, amen, was old. The Bible says she was stricken in age. In other words, at this stage in her life, she started to feel some aches and pain. Some of you have passed a certain milestones and, and now your body is creaking, amen, all the, the cartilage in your knees, amen, wore down and you're feeling outright arthritic pains and amen, you're feeling pains everywhere, you you can't sit up too long you can't, you can't lay down on one part of the side too long come on now somebody, the body is telling you something, you're getting older, I didn't say you're old, I said older, amen you're getting older now, amen, hallelujah and, and you gotta grieve some more you gotta, come on now somebody you gotta take multivitamins or, or one a day or Jerry complete or, or mix up some Irish stuff, you know. Peanut parts. Lord have mercy. I saw a pot coming in this morning. You gotta do what you gotta do. Amen. To keep in shape. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because you're getting to that stage in life. Amen. When things are not operating like they used to operate. Come on, somebody. But let me tell you something. As old as you may feel, amen. God is still working in your life. Hallelujah. There is no age paper where God is concerned. You know, that's what we say back in the island. What I meant to say for you Canadians is that there is no birth certificate. Uh, age paper, birth certificate. All right. All right. Yeah. Amen. You know, amen. There is no birth certificate when it comes out to God. God doesn't get old because God is a spirit. That is why when the spirit of the Lord comes up on you, you don't feel your age. You, you want to run like your young folk. Come on, somebody. You want to jump over chairs and sometimes the younger people got to hold you. So hold on, mother. Amen. But you don't feel your age when the anointing comes upon you. Can I get a witness in the house today? And so Elizabeth was old. Hallelujah. Stricken in age. And, and her husband was old as well. His name was Zachariah. And you know, one day when they were in the house worshiping, um, an angel appeared unto Zachariah. He was in the temple, rather. And said, Zachariah, your prayer has been heard. Hallelujah. I want to tell somebody this morning, your prayer has been heard. I don't know what you've been praying for. I know Sister Judith is praying for clarity and retention and, and asking God to have her remember what she studies in the exam. God, he will bring back things to your remembrance. Hallelujah. I declare that you'll be successful on that examination. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We speak a word of blessing over you. Hallelujah. Lord, release Hallelujah. that mind frame upon her so that she will remember what she studies and give her the right answers to the question. Come on, Lord. Cause her to be bold and, 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 and comfortable and relaxed in the exam room. Let her, let her palm sweat in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But you know, I don't know what the rest of you all have been praying for. I heard what 
what Judith mentioned, but I don't know what the rest of you all been praying for, but I'm here to declare by the Holy Ghost that your prayer has been heard. Uh, hallelujah to God. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I say your prayer has been heard. Uh, hallelujah. Whatever it is, I don't want to go into categories now. Let's not miss somebody, but your prayer. Will you help me preach to somebody? Touch your neighbor for the second time. I said, neighbor, the Lord told me to tell you that your prayer has been heard. Uh, hallelujah. I don't know how long you've been praying, uh, but your prayer what you've been praying for, but your prayer has been heard. Hallelujah. I don't know who told you that you will never get an answer, that it is impossible, but the Lord told me to tell you that all things are possible with God, and your prayer has been heard. Somebody shout glory to hell. I don't know if there's anybody ever prayed for something ridiculous. There is no point of reference. You've never seen it happen before. But when you ask God for ridiculous things, it's a type of worship because you put him in a category by himself. Lord have mercy. Somebody think it will never happen, but the devil is a liar and his hands is on fire. Your prayer. Your prayer has been heard. Somebody shout glory in the house. Come on, shout glory in the house. Shout glory in the house. Listen, I was in a service on Friday night, and a preacher got up to greet, and he told the audience that the Lord told him that if he praised him, he will do something special. I don't know what that on me. I knew when we were on live television. I knew there were people out of town watching me. I knew I would look ridiculous, but something came on me. And so you can't afford to act cute at this time. You are the one that need a place of worship. Lord have mercy. Is there anybody in the house this morning that need a breakthrough? Look at your neighbor for the third time. As your neighbor, I know I usually like this, but I feel a ridiculous praise coming on me. Somebody stand up on your feet and shout glory now. Is there anybody in the house with a ridiculous praise? Is that the best you can do? I feel I shout. I feel I glorify God. Because every time I praise Him, He opens doors for me. Every time I praise Him, He moves my enemies out of the way. Every time I praise Him, I get an increase on my pay. Somebody shout glory in the house. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout glory. God told Zechariah, he said, your prayer has been heard. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I don't know how God speaks to you, but check your inbox. Check your inbox. Check your Facebook wall. Go to your Twitter account in the spirit. Hallelujah. Check your email. Check yourself. Check your bank account. Check your pocketbook. Check it, check it, check it. Your, I don't know who came in your seat this morning, but check yourself. How's the sinus on it? Hallelujah. How's the allergies? You're feeling better? Your prayer has been heard. Touch your neighbor right now as a in the name of Jesus, be healed. Your prayer has been heard. Your prayer, your prayer, your prayer, your prayer, your prayer, your prayer. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Elizabeth. Amen. Conceived. Amen. She was six months pregnant. And the Bible says that there was no movement in her womb. So much so that the historians believe that she, she, she amen. Elizabeth believed that she was going to have a stillbirth. Amen. That she, this child was, had died. She was already old. This was her only chance. And, and now the child, there was no movement. But, but, but the Lord appeared to Mary up in the hills of Galilee and said, Mary, you are highly favored. Woo, mothers, you are highly favored. If you're a stepmother, godmother, mother-in-law, 
mother to be widow, amen, or a natural mother, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Can I get a witness here, somebody? Come on, brothers, let me tell somebody, amen, you are highly favored. Amen, the man may have walked off and left you, but you are highly favored. I feel like preaching this morning. Hallelujah. Times may be hard, but you are still highly favored. That's why no matter how times are, you still have money in your pocket. No matter how rough things are, there is still food on your table. It was even some corned beef and bread with some sugar and water. God still provides. I heard Joshua and Josiah said, Mommy always makes sure they have what they need. I know she's a single mother, but look what the Lord has done. God provides. Look at Sister Barbara, you couldn't tell. God is providing. Look at Cindy and Jennifer. God is providing. Look at Carlene and Paulette. God is providing. God is a provider. Judith, he's a provider. Carlene, he's a provider. Come on, somebody. Janet, he's a provider. Somebody shout glory to hell. My God. And so Mary, Mary was, amen, confronted by an angel. And he said, you are highly favored. He said, the Lord is with you. He said, go down now, amen, to Jerusalem, to, to Judea, because your cousin Elizabeth has conceived. Hallelujah. And she's going to bring forth a son. You know what happened? As soon as Mary saw Elizabeth, and said, girl, how you do? Something leaped in Elizabeth's womb. Lord, have mercy. When you find somebody, hallelujah, who will bless God with you, amen, something will move on you. There are some people that would like to see you blessed, hallelujah, but when you meet somebody who means you good, something will move on the inside. Somebody said, praise the Lord. And so Mary, Mary conceived and she had a son. She, she didn't know there was no man involved, amen, this was a miraculous birth. You know the son I'm talking about, his name is Jesus, hallelujah. Mary was privileged and she was going to be the mother amen of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah every time she rocked Mary sorry every time Mary rocked Jesus she didn't realize that she was rocking the baby who's got the world in his hand hallelujah every time she gave him suck amen she didn't realize that she was amen feeding the one who provides for the whole world can I get a witness in the house today she watched him grow hallelujah she saw him do some stuff that makes her wonder amen and everybody saw him they had always a word of prophecy amen over his life when Simeon saw the baby Jesus he said well it's time for me to go no let thy servant depart in peace for my eyes have seen the salvation of the Lord can I get a witness here somebody but the Bible said when Jesus amen was grown and they were introduced they were invited rather to a wedding in Cana of Galilee when they got there amen they ran out of wine but thank God the mother of Jesus was there hallelujah she's been watching the boy you know when daddy is always busy mother watch and she knows what you can do from what you can do. Come on now. Hallelujah. My wife has already allowed the boys to bathe themselves. If it wasn't for her, I would still bathe them. But she watched them and she knows their level of development and what they are capable of doing by themselves. Come on. My little son Jalen, I don't mean 